All right, welcome back everybody. I got a rather interesting telephone to show you all today. Uh, what I have in front of me is a very interesting uh, French telephone. And this one is actually uh, made to be uh, placed on the wall. So it's a wall telephone. And this one is made by CGCT. And that is the little abbreviation for Compagnie Générale de Construction Téléphonique. And they are in Paris. You can see uh, 251 Rue de Vaugirard, Paris. Sorry for my French accent there. That's uh, that's the best I can do. Um, but they were in, out in Paris. So um, it's a very, very compact telephone. And they're really, you know, I've been trying to find, uh, you know, an official model number or model name to it and there really isn't anything that comes up so i kind of call it the french space saver telephone because it's a very compact and um, you can fit it in any you know if you whatever sliver of wall that you have in your house you know if you're limited on space you have a really good chance of being able to mount this telephone without having to um, move anything especially if you have a small apartment home or whatnot but um, this one is actually from uh, 1962, so it's a, it's not very, it's not too old, but it's not a new telephone either. So it's 1962, just right on the cusp of the 60s. So uh, this telephone has a, a handset that looks a lot like an F1 handset that are found on Western Electric telephones, although. Um, they don't, they didn't put any markings on it. So this was actually, a, I think, a, I can't remember. This was a birthday present that my mom got me. You know, I, I um, saw it on Etsy and I said, you know, I wanted this telephone. And I put that on the list for my birthday wishes. And um, this telephone did, you know, of course, come straight from France. But the seller said that it was uh, mounted in a uh, farm home. So it was out in the uh, out in the country, uh, you know, the French countryside. So it was a uh, farmhouse telephone, which is really really cool story of hearing about that. Unfortunately, within um, you know shipping the handset cap here where the transmitter is, um, you know, with it being brittle, it got damaged in the mail. So this telephone was basically it wasn't even um, in a a proper box it was wrapped in a whole bunch of um bubble wrap all kinds of stuff and it was just like a big ball you know so that's obviously how it got damaged but other than that nothing else is damaged on the telephone thank goodness but it's um yeah it's a very nice phone the earlier models so this dial must have been replaced at some point or it's a you know this is a later model they um had the the same type of dial but with a a metal finger wheel to it. These telephones are very, uh, the, these dials are very reminiscent of the, uh, was it the uh, Automac Electric uh, number four, type four dial? So it's gonna have like that slipping type of, you know, has a little catch on it. So you have the, you know, these dials feel different compared to, um, you know, the Automac Electric and the, and the numbers are, you know, it's it's a wider, you know, it's a much larger finger wheel than found on automatic electric dials. Let me give you a closer look at the dial here. There's nothing really different about the the center label as found on the Saco Tele 63s. This cell phone has the uh, numbers and letters for the uh, bezel, and they have the black numbers and the red letters. So yeah. Um, I can't remember. I think it's the exact opposite found on the Western Electric. Yes, on the Western Electric. I have my 302 here. My previous video I did. They uh, decided to be different. As you can see on the Western, uh, on the 302 here, the numbers are red and the letters are black. But on these dials, the numbers are black and the letters are red. So they decided to do the exact opposite. 
to be kind of unique, I guess. This is what they wanted to do with these telephones. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna give you a closer look at the body here. So you can see the dials mounted on the bottom and we've got a chrome handset hook there, the uh, switch hook. And then you got an emblem here for the CGCT company. And there aren't any other markings on this telephone whatsoever. Uh, they mounted, you know, of course, these, this hole and this hole. I'm not sure how they mounted these. Maybe it was on a wooden plank that was raised up a little bit because you, you know, they got this kind of indentation. Or I don't know if they had a special mounting bracket used for these telephones, so I have no clue how they mounted these. But um, to open this telephone, you would unscrew this screw right here and this part you know so you got the plate on the back and then you got this part it opens up and it is mounted on a hinge you can see the two hinges there and you can uh, if the telephone needs to be serviced all you need to do is open it up like a door and then uh, you got the workings on the inside so give me a second and i will open up the telephone for you without having to post pictures at the end um to uh, demonstrate what it looks like on the inside. So uh, we will be right back. Okay, thank you very much for the wait. So um, here's the uh, interior of the phone here. So we'll start on the left here. We got a capacitor here. You can see it was made um, uh, the 6th of February, 1962. And then we got the wiring, uh, the I don't think you can call it PC board because it's got uh, traditional, you know, terminals on it. So, I, so there, so it's traditional wires, not PC board. But that's what the network looks like. So capacitor is on the top, and wiring is on the bottom. I did since replace the uh, handset cord because the original one was uh, dried out. We also got the wiring diagram. And then at the bottom, or see here, um, before we get to that, this is the uh, buzzer. And then at the very bottom here is the uh, rotary dial. So yeah, that's what the inside looks like. I don't really have any technical information on this telephone. Um, but you can see all the information here on this capacitor. And then the wiring diagram. And feel free to uh, freeze the video or to pause the video to uh, get a closer look at that. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, let me go ahead and close that up. Um, this particular phone was not hardwired, or at one point it was, maybe it was, but um, it now has a, uh, a uh, conventional French plug on it. So um, this phone was not hardwired as far as I know. Maybe in its later life, but um, it's got a, uh, plug on it now so yeah um let me put this handset on here to give you a look at what the uh phone would look like with the handset on it sorry i'm doing this one-handed here do that I'm get an idea what it looks like on the wall that's what it would look like it's a very cool telephone so what we'll do next is I will demonstrate the functionality of the phone. It does work. So uh, give me a second and I will get the machine up here. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. So I got the telephone uh, in my hand right now and I have my uh, camera here mounted on a tripod so I can do everything with both hands this time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up the handset 
It can give you dial tone. If you can hear here, or if you can hear here. And if you can see, as I speak into the handset, uh, take a look at that little red light there where it says voice slash dial level okay. As I speak into it, it indicates that the uh, transmitter is working uh, as it should. So that's good. And I'm gonna dial a few numbers here. Okay, and then the best part of this video is the ringer. I very much hope that you enjoyed this video of this neat uh, French version of the Space Saver telephone. Unknown model number of this telephone made by CGCT uh, from 1962. More videos are to come. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.